Um, yeah, so really to talk to you about the real world challenges um, that we faced in implementing an IoT platform for the refrigeration industry. Um, I'll start off by giving you some big, brief background about the company and what we actually do. So uh, the company was established in 2009 um, by myself and by my dad, Michael Slattery, and we're joined very shortly afterwards by Jonathan. <coughs> um, my background is as an electronic and computer engineer, um, so general tech nerd in college type thing. And my dad's background is in the refrigeration industry. <coughs> Um, so he had a sales and services business um, selling to hospitals and um, hotels and, and people like that. Um, I worked in London for a number of years and came back to Ireland and we decided to kind of put our heads together and see what we could do, kind of mer merging his skill set and, and my skill set. Um, so we based our operation down in Cork. So um, we've got an office in Little Island. Um, there's about, well, by the end of the year now, we'll have about 15 people all together. Half of those are R&D and then half of them are business development and salespeople. Um, the general theme of what we try to do really is it's around hardware and software for the refrigeration industry. Our focus primarily is around software, but to implement a lot of the services that, that we provide, we've had to design our own hardware platform as well, which, which I'll talk to you about. Um, it's been one of the major challenges that we, focus, that we faced. Um, we use M to M cloud technologies, IoT technologies, big data, all those kind of buzzwords that, that you hear around the internet in the minute. And we apply it to the way that refrigeration equipment is managed. So that covers a broad spectrum of things. It's everything from, you know, the very simple automating HACCP reports and to implementing modules that are much more complicated around predictive maintenance and asset tracking and uh, remote control of, of the equipment. Um, where we are at the minute, so starting back in 2009, initially we, we set up the company in 2011 officially, and 2015 has been our first proper commercial year, so we spent a lot of, R of time in R&D and trying ideas and failing and, and trying again. And by the end of this year, we're on track to have about 10,000 units under management on the platform. And that's been primarily added over the last nine months. So it's been a very busy summer, let's say, for, for myself and Jonathan and the rest of the team. Um, they're mainly deployed in Ireland at the minute, um, across Ireland and, and some units in the UK. But we, are, we do have some units in further afield in Italy. We're talking to companies in Portugal, France, um, the US as well. So we're starting just now in the last few months to kind of look outside of Ireland at, at the different opportunities that are there. Um, today, for example, we'll gather about 4.5 million rolls of data in relation to those 10,000 assets altogether. So it, there's a massive in infrastructure in the background managing all of that equipment. <coughs> um, just to give you a very quick introduction to our product and, and what we actually sell to give you a better understanding of the company. Our main platform and the platform we first went to market with is called our Fusion platform. So that's the, the platform in the middle there. That's what we use in the supermarket scenario where we've got, let's say, anywhere between 40 and 100 different pieces of refrigeration equipment on site. And our, our modules that we sell there are around automated compliance reporting, um, improved energy efficient, efficiency and real-time refrigeration analytics and, and that is primarily a supermarket product. Um, to the left there as you look at it then is our second main product which we call our Integra product. So that is typically for a standalone piece of refrigeration equipment. So that might be something like a cold room, a high value cold room in in a location such as a hotel or where we've been getting a lot of traction with it recently is let's say with, um, with bottle bottlers of, of soft drinks and that where they have one fridge in 10,000 locations uh, across across the country. Um, the, the two, the two, both of those platforms are what we call multi-vendor management platforms. So you can have different makes, different models of equipment with different controllers in them and you can manage them seamlessly on our platform and that's one of the key selling points of, of our platform. Um, the third product that we have then, which we've, we've only, we're, we're in the early stages with, with a large hardware company at the minute, is what we call platforms as a service. So basically we sit in the background, we run all the, the infrastructure, 
but we let our partner white label the offering. So it's for maintenance companies, it's for large OEMs within the industry, it's for large digital controller manufacturers in the industry. They obviously have huge you know, sales networks. <coughs> Um, they see the opportunity for software, but they want to be able to sell the software themselves and and kind of and structure their own sales and marketing initiatives themselves. So we sit in the background. Um, it's powered by Zito on the inside, kind of you know powered by Intel type thing. And for all intensive purposes, then it looks like the platform of our partner. So that's that's one of the the big areas that we're putting the push on over the next few years in terms of our own platform. <coughs> Um, to give you an idea of what we do then, I just want to very quickly describe what Fusion is, which is our supermarket platform. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about some of the challenges that we faced in implementing this platform for, as, as an example. Um, the, so the Fusion platform connects all of the refrigeration equipment in the supermarket to our cloud servers. And initially, when we came up with this concept a number of years ago, the idea was that we would connect over a store's LAN connection or, or use their internal, internal network. And that proved to be you know, a crazy idea from, from, a, from a security point of view. So one of the big challenges we faced was how do we get all of this data on site without having to involve an IT department of a major retailer because it was, you know, logistically, it would have had months if not years onto, onto any project. Um, so we partnered with uh, Vodafone and uh, we used their machine to machine network. And on, it, on, on any of our supermarket sites now we have a gateway machine. And I have examples of all of our hardware today, if, if you want to have a look at them, we can talk about them in a bit more detail. But the gateway has a, has a SIM card in it, and that's how we provide two-way communication between the refrigeration equipment and, and our cloud platform. Once we get the data into the cloud, then we can do various things with it, and different services that we can build on top of all of that data. And we can also send control commands back down to the equipment as well. So one of the big challenges we faced was, you know, the, the internal IT infrastructure of these large organizations. And we had to spend months, years, and we're still doing it, you know, improving our, our GSM connection and our machine to machine connection to the site. Um, then all, the, all different types of hardware in the, in the store had to be connected to the platform. So. And one of the main drivers behind the sales process is that from a health and safety point of view, you can automate all of the compliance reporting. So there's no point in having 90% or 95% of the equipment on the platform. You have to have 100% of the equipment on the platform or else there's still a manual process of having to write down the, the temperature of the equipment from the health and safety point of view. <coughs> So we had to work very closely with uh, the digital controller manufacturers <coughs> with the various OEMs and figure out how we get all of the equipment in a particular store onto the platform. Um, within the different types of equipment then we monitor different things depending on, on the end service that the user wants. So we might be monitoring <coughs> purely temperature for one customer, another customer will want temperature, current information, voltage information about the equipment as well from an energy management point of view. Um, so again, that was a big logistical challenge and, and a big R&D challenge that we had to overcome and we're still in, in the process, process of overcoming it. Um, but the, the, you know, the, the, and, and that has been, again, it's, it's a big selling point of our platform now that we do have all different various types of sensors, various types of digital controllers on our platform. Um, just to, to give you a brief introduction to the hardware there, and as I said, I have some samples with me, but our Fusion network, first of all, um, is, is on top. So um, I think there's a pointer on this thing. So um, we have our own independent piece of hardware that interfaces with, and the, the sample there is a Dixel controller. So there's a, a, um, a Modbus um, interface here between our piece of hardware um, it's a, it's a, wired, a wired connection um, into the digital controller. This is what we call our Fusion client and that communicates wirelessly to our gateway. So you might have 40, 50, 100 of these on, on a particular site. You'll have one gateway with one SIM card and it's, there's an in-store Zigbee, wireless Zigbee network then coordinating all of the communications. <coughs> The gateway then commu communicates with, a, with our message broker over a GSM network. So from here to here, we're getting the data off site and we're bringing it onto our cloud platform. Our, our Integra um, hardware works in a very similar 
um, way, except it's, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So we have our, our, our Integra client plugged into the controller, but the SIM card is built into the client and it communicates over GSM network directly into our message brokering system. So we have all various different types of hardware and what we've been seeing in the last kind of six to nine months as well is now there's third party hardware companies building compliant hardware to our platform as well. So whereas we have our Fusion, we have our Integra, we now have a third party company building hardware to, to, put, to bring, bring information to this part of the message brokering system. And from there, it's all a single software platform from, from our point of view. Um, what does the solution look like to the end user? So I just took a, a screenshot for you to, to show you an example. So Lidl are one of our clients and this is a backup chiller and, and when the screenshot was taken, obviously we we're looking at the live information. So within, um, within a client like this, they, they have one temperature sensor in every single piece of refrigeration equipment in 179 stores, roughly eight and a half thousand um, pieces of refrigeration equipment around the country. So even though it's quite simple information that they're looking at, there's a huge amount of it. So the volumes are massive. So one of the big challenges that we faced was how do you simplify all this data for someone like a health and safety user who they're non-technical, they know how to use Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and all the rest of it. They know how to take out their iPhone and kind of interpret all, all, all of that sort of data that they see. So we had to start, you know, start at the very start and go, what is the absolute basic piece of information that they need? And this is the, inter this is the interfaces that we ended up with. We, we started off with a very different interface, but we worked along with the, with the customer to design the most intuitive interface for them. And again, that was a big challenge for us. Like, I mean, we have all this data, but how do you simply how do you communicate it in a very simple fashion to the end user that they can glance at and understand what's happening? And this is one of, one of, one of the pieces that we came up with. So here you can see the temperature over, I think, a 24-hour period. Uh, we've got a door opening and closing sensor on this backup chiller as well, so they can correlate rises in temperature with door opening and closing events. Um, in the middle of the night, they can see defrost happening and they can quite quickly see what the current temperature is, what the minimum and maximum alarm temperatures are and that. So that, that's, a, that's one of, the, again, you know, a, a something that a lot, of, a lot of feedback that we get from our clients is that they really like the simplicity of the user interface. It's optimized for viewing on a PC. It's optimized for viewing on a tablet or a mobile phone. Um, and that's what it looks like to the end user. And I have one or two more screenshots of that. <coughs> Um, so from a predictive maintenance point of view, we, we've got one very active customer in this area at the minute and uh, speaking with Niall over the last few days, it's, it's not an area that he would have focused hugely on, but it's an area that we see a huge amount of um, opportunity in. Um, based on our research, we can see about a 30% savings in maintenance overheads by moving from a reactive maintenance or a preventative maintenance model to more of a predictive maintenance model using all the data that, that we gather on a daily basis. We then have the challenge of how do we, again, take all that massive amount of data but um, give it very simply back to a refrigeration engineer or uh, a facilities manager. Um, text messages is probably the easiest form of doing that. So we take all of that data, we run it through an algorithm, and if it's, possi if, if, if it's a problem, we send out text messages to the user. They can reply and acknowledge alerts and all the rest of it. But they, that two-way communication piece between our platform and the user is, can be done entirely over SMS. They can log on to the platform as well, and they can see a more detailed view of the data. So they're looking at the condenser temperature, the current draw, the discharge line, the liquid line, suction line temperatures. It's all graphed, and they can view that over time. And from a trained engineer's point of view, they can then look at that <coughs> and start using that data to themselves interpret what the actual issue with the piece of refrigeration equipment might be. As we get more intelligent around refrigeration, and myself and Jonathan would hold our hands up and say, look, we're software guys and you know, we've, we've a lot to learn about refrigeration. The engineers are feeding data back to us. They're saying that this scenario is a possible problem. We build an algorithm to, to alert to that scenario so we get more and more intelligent around how we interpret that data and what we can actually do with that data. And we can start alerting people earlier and quicker to, to problems before they happen. And again, um, this is going to be one of the big areas of focus for us for, for 2016 on how we actually kind of drive the, the future of our platform. 
Um, I, I've talked a lot about this, but I just very quickly, how does it work? So the GSM connection is, is, is a really important part for us. Um, <coughs> it's, it allows us to, to move very quickly, to work um, very quickly with the clients. We kind of say hello to the IT department, this is what we're doing, but we don't actually have any interaction with them because it's all on our own network. And we, we manage that end-to-end -end network piece ourselves. Um, and, and it allows us to provide two-way communication with, with the platform as well, which is very, between the platform and the equipment, <coughs> which is very important, obviously, from a remote maintenance point of view that you can actually interface with the controller and change parameters. But then from an energy efficiency point of view, that based on the current data that you're getting fed back, that you can take actions in real time and, and take control of, of the piece of equipment. Um, as I said, we've got PC, ta mobile, tablet login, so the end user can log in. Sorry, the end user can log in. You know, and, and this is the type of dashboard that they see here. And um, they, they see, you know, how many stores they have, how many units, high priority stores, high priority cabinets, and they can access that that information very quickly. And finally, then we're 100% cloud-based, so our, our our infrastructure is all it's Amazon Web Services. It's it's using everything that you know Twitter, Facebook, and um, WhatsApp. All these guys use because we want to be highly scalable. Um, today we've got 10,000 pieces of of equipment on the platform, but when when we're back in the office, like the question we're asking ourselves is, how do we get to 100,000? How do we get to a million, 10 million? And, you know, we can't do that based on old technology and old infrastructure. We have to be using the very latest in, in technology to do that. Um, so it's a tool for refrigeration own, owners and engineers. Um, the different type of services we can build on top of that data, they, they're extremely varied based on the different types of industries that, that we're talking about talking to and talking about real-time alerts is massive predictive maintenance is, is, is massive for us as well emails automation HACCP reports and automating compliance reports that's been the area where we've got most traction of you know this year and and, and the area that we has allowed us to really get to 10,000 units you know that that's where we've got the really early traction in because it takes away a massive amount of paperwork and manual labor and improves compliance by you know a, a magnitude of, of of 10 or 20 one of the clients that we're working with they used to have two data points every day for a piece of equipment you know if a health and safety officer came in now they've got 12 data points every hour that they can you know prove compliance if, if there's ever a query about from a health and safety point of view and asset tracking then is, is a big area that, that we're getting a lot, a lot of queries from. Um, I was with a potential client there a couple of, of, of months back and they have 100,000 pieces of equipment. He took out a spreadsheet and said this is all of our equipment, it's about 70% correct. We know where 70% of those 100,000 pieces of equipment are. So if we send out a van to restock a piece of equipment, there's a 70% chance that, there's a, that, that, that the equipment is going to be there. And you know, that's uh, crazy from, from our point of view. So there's a huge you know, opportunity there, as we see it, simply by putting a SIM card into a fridge and, and being able to um, build a service on top of that. Um, that's my presentation. It's obviously a very quick kind of whistle stop tour of what we're doing. And um, both myself and Jonathan will be happy to take any questions throughout today. Okay.